Look at me, guys. I got a new hat. Hi, right, guys. Welcome back to Barovian Meta. Hope you enjoyed the drip. <laughs> I uh, went on a little website and managed to order myself some uh, branded clothes. Don't worry. I'm not shoving merch down your face. I've made this for myself, but I'm over the moon with it. But let's stop talking about my clothes and let's talk about what we're going to be getting into this video. This video is for my mother. It is her birthday coming up. Uh, it's going to be the 13th of October. Currently, as it stands, it's about two weeks until then. So I have until then to finish this project. She's been going up at me for a while about making a new top for her shoe rack. But I thought, let's go a step further. Let's make her a brand new shoe rack out of all this lovely oak that we have, that we've stripped down from things that we've got on Marketplace. So uh, let's quit blabbling and uh, let's go on with the video. Got no idea what I'm doing. So we're starting off with what I'd consider to be the frame or the skeleton of the actual shoe rack. I'm just using pine for this because I do plan on painting it. And I wouldn't want to waste my oak if I'm gonna go ahead and paint something anyway. So we're using pine for this. I just picked up three boards from B and Q, they're like three pound each or something like that. And I just cut everything to rough size so it's more manageable. Right, so we're about a minute or two into the video, and I just want to have a quick stop and talk about safety and stupidity in the workshop. I've just really hurt my hand on my table saw that isn't even turned on. So let me show you what I did, and let's talk about how to prevent little stupid accidents like this. So obviously I can't show what I did on camera, or else YouTube would demonetize the video. Uh, the cuts on my fingers aren't that bad. I don't think it warrants going to the hospital. My ring finger, you can sort of see the knuckle, uh, but it should be fine. It's an awkward place and you won't be able to put stitches in it anyway, I don't think. But I had my table saw blade sticking up about this much. The table saw was turned off, but it was covered in sawdust. So I quickly thought, right, let's brush everything off the table saw. And I went to go brush over here and I just dragged my hand across the sharp table saw blade so even when you haven't got your blade turned on and you're just doing stuff you need to be complacent about this yeah you can't well, complacent is that even the right word to use i don't know you need to be wary of the blade i've really hurt my finger i can barely even bend my ring finger so if you're ever cleaning your table saw or doing anything make sure the blade is down don't be me don't be stupid now that little service announcement is done, stay safe in the workshop and uh, let's get cracked on with, with the project and hopefully let's not hurt ourselves again. But we've cut out all of these. I know I said we're going to be making it out of oak. The top and the shelf is all going to be made out of oak, but all this is going to be painted black, so I didn't see the need to use a nice wood. So I just ran to B&Q and picked up some uh, beams for like £3 a beam. So yeah. Let's quit talking. Uh, I know this video has been interrupted, but let's get cracked on. Let's get all these down to size. So feeling a little bit shaky on the table saw now, I was making sure to keep full attention on the blade on what I was doing, making sure I'm using the push rod and everything, but still stupidly leaning over the table saw to grab the finished cut pieces. Uh, shouldn't do that with the table saw running. You should wait for your blade to spin down, then reach over and grab it. But I had a lot of these boards to cut out and uh, I just leant over and grabbed them all. So don't be me, don't be stupid, like I said. But yeah, I'm, I'm being pretty cautious, cautious for my level. And although most people would consider this stuff to be good to use straight from B&Q basically, uh, because it's already dimensional lumber and stuff, it's not like furniture grade dimensional. So... And also they round the corners off and I want straight cut corners because then when you start butting things up together, the, there are these weird gaps that you have to fill. So I'm just taking the time to knock all the squares off the corner, make sure everything's nice and square, all perfectly the same size, which is going to save us a lot of time and headache in the future. So definitely square up all the lumber you get and make sure everything's nice and perfect. And uh, after we did all that, I decided to come back and take these all to final size. I just, you know, scribed a little line in it. My table saw is a lot more accurate than my chop saw, so that's why I'm doing it on here. All right, guys, so I got a little bit of a head of myself. Uh, I did a little bit of work off camera, and I've basically just 
glued and screwed everything together. Uh, we've got a lot going on in this video, so I don't want to waste too much time showing how I put all of this together. But uh, I basically just screwed, glued, and nailed it all together. So now we have the basic skeleton. Still got no idea what I'm doing, but we now have to put a floor, the sides, and the back in on this. Not quite sure what's the best way to do this. I don't know whether to have it on the inside and keep these beams exposed here, or have it flat on the top and have it come out the sides a little bit. I am a little bit unsure, so I'm kind of just thinking about it. But uh, yeah, this is where we're up to right now. And uh, next, I think we're gonna just start working on the floor and then worry about the sides after we get the floor in. Oh, it's painful watching this back, seeing all these nice big chunks of wood getting cut up into smaller pieces, but I had no other bits of wood, so I had to use these and uh, yeah, it hurt, but it, I came out with a nice product. So overall, I'm happy with it, but I really didn't like cutting up these nice big chunks that I have and uh, hurt the sole a little bit. But we're taking all these down. I decided I'm just going to cut everything out and then try and deal with it all. And for my regular viewers, you might recognize this piece of wood from a previous project. Uh, I, I lied when I chucked it in the scrap bin. I didn't chuck it in the scrap bin. I chucked it back on my stockpile because I thought this will come in handy one day. And uh, it did. I managed to cut it up and use it for this shoe rack and uh, try to preserve as much wood as possible. But I, I did have to go back to my bigger chunks of wood and cut them up into smaller pieces as well, which again hurt my soul. Right, so we have all of our pieces all cut out. Now we have to sand everything. I'm very confused on the order of operations here. There's so many different bits that I've got to sand and do. Uh, I'm getting very confused, but I figured sand it now assemble it and then if i need to sand later i can come back and sand it again instead of just putting it all in and then struggling to sand the pieces so i'm going to sand it now this might be a waste of time but let's get everything nice and sanded we're going up to 320 grit Done all with it. I need to invest in some dust collection but you might notice while i'm drilling all these holes that there's a bandage around my arm that's because i was stupid enough to try use my angle grinder to sand in the corners of these pieces and uh, obviously the angle grinder bit into one of the sides ripped itself out of my hands and uh, decided to have a good grind at my arm so you know when my, when my mother asks how this project was i'm gonna tell her that literal blood sweat and tears went into this project because i have hurt myself so many times in this video it is ridiculous but yeah anyway aside from myself hurting myself this project's going together quite well and uh it, you might be looking at how i'm putting this all together and you might be like that is a bit of a weird way to do it but uh it came out nice in the end and <clears throat> you notice that doesn't go all the way up to the edge where the shelf's gonna go that's to make clearance for the door to slide in because I was an idiot and didn't measure before doing anything. So I had to cut a little slot out to make sure the door could still close. But I was also a bit nervous on how am I going to attach this little uh, wall, I guess we'll call it, in between. I ended up just coming in at a 45 degree angle with some nails and some glue, tapping it all in place. And that was more than strong enough. The glue held it in place pretty good. We'll see how it holds up in the long run, though, because there isn't any accounting for wood movement here. Those boards are going to want to expand and contract, and I've only really thought about this while I'm editing. At the time, I didn't think it'd be that much of an issue because the smaller pieces, but they are one big piece. You know, As in, like, it's not loads of boards glued up together. It's just one board put in there and slotted in there. So, fingers crossed. It holds up in the long run. I think it will anyway. I think that little board it might only move a couple of millimeters, and I think there's probably enough breathing room within the pine to allow for that. But let me know down in the comments if you think it will hold up. 
And if you're wondering what I'm doing here with a screwdriver, by the way, I'm not doing anything special. I'm just sinking the nail heads that I'm using into the actual wood, just so they're not sticking out on the surface, and it gets a little bit of a tighter fit as well. I did the same thing with attaching these sides here. Uh, although, I guess I could say I counted for a little bit of wood movement, because <laughs> when I first cut all these out, I cut it to perfect size, so you'd have to tap it in with a hammer, and it was all, you know, perfectly done. And then I went and sanded it, and it became a really, really loose fit. So, uh, you know, you'd think I'd learn these lessons by now, but I'm still learning. The still as going. I'm about a year and a bit into woodworking, <laughs> and still making these stupid mistakes. But I secured them in place with some nails and some glue, and uh, it turned out to be perfectly fine. And uh, it came out pretty well. I ended up going back around at the end, put a bit of filler in it, and uh, it looked fine after painting it, and it was great. And if you're a frequent video watcher of my channel, why did I say that in such a weird way? If you're a frequent viewer, you'll know where this is from. These are from all of the uh, things that are ripped down for the wood. Uh, I made a video about going to Marketplace and getting free oak. And I told you not to throw these little bits of oak away. They always come in handy. We will just ignore that little slip up for now. I didn't just stab my screwdriver into a freshly sanded bit of wood. But like I said, those little bits always come in handy. And I used it in this situation to attach the top. And talking about the top, there's a little uh, imperfection that we need to fix up. So there was a little bit of chip out on this. Obviously, when I ripped this unit down, uh, a screw or something must have broke out of the side and chipped this bit off. So I'm just coming in doing a little uh, insert. I made a video about doing inserts and stuff like that. It's really, really not that intimidating as it seems. All you need is a really sharp chisel and a bit of practice and inserts, especially ones like this, are really simple and easy. I made a video where I did it all in one take and explained all of it as I was going along. Because uh, I know when I first started out, I thought inlays and stuff were dead intimidating, but they're not as hard as they seem and they're pretty forgiving, especially when you're doing the square ones and stuff. But... Now we're going back around and we're painting and mother if you're watching this yes that is your balm paint that i'm using and i didn't go out and buy the black paint it's been sat in the shed for a while so i thought i'd use it up <laughs> but yeah just painting around the perimeter Every, basically everything that's pine is getting painted uh, i wanted to have that nice black and oak contrast because uh, where this place is going it's having a shelf where it's also got black brackets underneath and an oak top uh, made by yours truly <laughs> so i kind of wanted it to match that and the general decor of the house but here i was a little bit nervous because i was putting the oil on and i was a little bit worried that it would make the paint come off or like you know smudge it and stuff so i was being very very careful not to get it on the corners and stuff but turns out the paint didn't come off so i'm not quite sure if i showed it here but i ended up going around the whole thing and giving it a whole coat of oil uh i'm not quite sure if putting oil on paint helps with the protection for the paint let me know down in the comments below your theories but if it doesn't smudge or weaken the paint i can't see how it can't do any harm to put a bit of oil on it added a little bit of sheen to it as well which i liked but you can see this is coming out really really nice and i really do like it and also you're probably wondering about that uh what, what what's it called cabinet door yeah yeah you're probably wondering about that cabinet door and when that was made uh that came off a unit I threw it to one side and I was making this and I thought, oh, perfect, I'll use that for the door. Right, so, we've gotten the base mostly done. Uh, the paint's all on, we've stained all of these. Uh, if I was going to come and do this again, I'd uh, probably do things a bit more different. It does look a bit weird, and to be honest, I kind of liked it better when it was the light wood. But I'm going to keep it like this just because it matches more of the furniture in the actual house. So... Yeah, I think it looks very nice, don't get me wrong. I think it just could, could look better. But this is my first time building a unit like this. So I'll, I'll know for next time if I ever make a project like this again. But the base is mostly done. There's a few touch-up areas that we have to look at. Uh, I'm not very handy with the paintbrush, so I have to go and sand some of the paint off that spilled over. And uh, just basic little touch-ups here and there. Um, this door might need a little bit shaving off it. I've already shaved a bit off it, and it's closing nicely now. But it's still a tight fit and we've got to think about, uh, you know, wood movement through the seasons. 
you know, I I, I want to be able to open this door all year round, not just, you know, when it's shrunk. But anyway, I'm yapping too much. Next thing we got to do is the top. Now, my mum doesn't like harsh round overs, so I'm going to try to keep this as square as possible. And then at the end, just come across with a bit of sandpaper just to take the sharp edge off. Uh, but we're not going to do, do anything fancy for the top. We're going to keep it nice and basic. Uh, but one thing I, we do have to do is, because this is from an old unit that I got on Facebook Marketplace that I stripped down. Brilliant video if you want to go watch it, how, we, how you get free oak and stuff. I, I, I've got so much oak in here that I've gotten for free. It's ridiculous. So it's well worth watching that video to get the tips and tricks on how to find free oak. But tangent over. This has got some like bits of glue and stuff on it from the last unit from when I ripped it off. So we need to take it to the table saw, clean up the, all four sides, sand everything down. And then we literally just got to whack some oil on it and uh, get it on the table. I think this is going to look really nice. So home stretch now. Stick around, I'm excited for this. Oh, it needs to be plugged in. Oh, when will I learn? Right. Now, let's make some dust. So like I said before, all this wood is from units I've stripped down in the past and gotten for free. And with this being stripped down from a previous unit, it's got bits of glue and stuff on all the corners and stuff. Uh, it's it, it's just nasty. So instead of trying to sand it or scrape it all off, I'm just going around to the table saw, just taking little skim passes and shaving it all down, just so I can get nice clean edges. And then after that, we're going to go back to the sander, uh, crossing our fingers that we're not going to drop the sander and sand our arm instead. But uh, yeah, I'm taking this all the way up to 320 grits. Uh, I could really do with some dust collection. I don't know if you can see, but I'm using hoodies to protect the table that I've already, you know, not the table, the skeleton that I've already done. This is the top. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I'm messing up my words today. Uh, you guys know what I mean. The, what we've done so far, I've covered it with hoodies and stuff, just so I don't get dust all over it because it's nicely finished now. And just before this oil goes on, this has got to be the nicest chunk of wood out of the pile. I'm so glad I didn't cut this one up because it is beautiful this has got to be the nicest tabletop that i've made so far and uh, my mother better be appreciative because i'm not making obviously not making any money off this project and i've chucked my nicest bit of wood at her so i mean it's worth it it's coming up to her 60th so she deserves a special gift and this is a very very special piece of wood but you'll see it in the final shots but just the different sort of colors and tones the swirling grain Oh, I am in love with this piece of, piece of wood. <laughs> I'm sorry you're talking about wood, but it looks really, really nice, and I really enjoy it. And one good thing that's coming from this is I will be able to see it every day, unlike if I sold it to a customer. Mm. <sighs> if I a smaller bit. Uh, I'm just going to have to do all these by hand. Come on. Oh, do I have a bit in here? Yep. No, we don't. <sighs> Keep doing it by hand. God damn it. Let's go again. Two more, two more to go. Come on. Oh, 
last one. Let's go. Ah, there we go. Close. Oh God, my arms. How many was that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen screws in by hand. Uh, oh, heavy, heavy, heavy. Oh. There we go. Oh, very pretty, very pretty. I like. So as you can see, it came out very nice and I really i am in love with that top. I, I'm glad that I'm going to be able to see it every day. Here it is in its final resting place. I probably should have measured that corner before putting it in, but luckily it fit in there like a glove. And yeah, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this project. I really enjoyed it. The mother was thrilled with it and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Like, subscribe, stick around and uh, I hope to see you again.